Sunday greetings, everyone. Thank you for tuning in and joining us on another Teach Me to Obey radio broadcast. I am your host, Anita Punchy Lewis, and once again, I have with me Adina Lee and Kristen Amer, two Level 3 students at Kingdom Academy. Once again, welcome Adina and Kristen to Teach Me to Obey. Hello everyone and Sunday greetings to you. Hope you've had a wonderful day so far. It is indeed a pleasure as always to be here with you on the Teach Me to Obey broadcast. Good day everyone and it is a pleasure to be here once again. I hope that everyone has been enjoying and been educated by our sessions and I hope that Today will be no different for you guys. Thank you very much, Adina and Kristen. And indeed, Kristen, as you said, we do hope that our listeners are being educated because that is why we are here. We are not here for entertainment, but we are here to educate you according to the word of God concerning the fivefold governmental leadership team. We have been here for a number of weeks and we have been discussing, having some eye-opening, interesting, informative discussions on the fivefold governmental leadership team. The fivefold ministry, which consists of the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors or shepherds, and the teachers. Last week and the previous week, we were discussing the fivefold teacher, and we're going to continue on that discussion this week. Last week, we mentioned, we spoke about the desperate need for teaching versus preaching. We spoke about the fact that preaching has its place, yet as believers, what we need is teaching. When we are converted, we need to be taught. We mentioned the great commission that Jesus gave to his disciples, which is found in Matthew 28, verses 19 to 20, when Jesus said to them, you know, go and teach disciples. He told them to make disciples and to teach them to obey. He spent three and a half years teaching his disciples. Then he commissioned them to go and do likewise, teach people to obey what I have taught you. We noted the richness of in the interaction that occurs through teaching. We also noted that a true fivefold teacher comes with a systematic structure of how the believers are taught based on their spiritual ages. Now this week, we are moving on to the fivefold teacher in office having the ability to accurately discern the spiritual ages of believers. Teaching needs to be done based on the spiritual age of believers. We touched on this last week when we noted that it should be done according to the spiritual age and not the biological age. The spiritually mature fivefold teacher would know and discern where the believer is at. That is the level or stage that the believer is at. Adina? Thank you, Shepherd Anita. And you are so correct. Indeed, the fivefold teacher is able or should be able to discern the spiritual age of his or her students. An example I can give you of that is of myself, you know, being a teacher in training and where I have been working with two groups. In one group, there was a particular student who I was able to discern does not belong in that group. Instead, that student belonged to the spiritual baby stage and not so much the higher group that student was in. And so I was able to discern and align that student to the right group so that they could receive the right food for their age. Thank you very much, Adina, for sharing on that. I too can share 
of an experience with a student who grew up in church. But as time progressed, I became more aware of the characteristics of this person and discovered that this person was in fact still at the baby stage. The person grew up in church, the person was water baptized, was an active member in the church, was even called on to minister at times. Yet, after all those years, that individual needed to be taught the fundamental principles of the word. Why was this so? Because those things had not yet been mastered practically in that person's life. And that is how it is with many of us who been in church for a long time and doing this and doing that, yet we have not yet mastered the fundamentals of the word. It is not about having head knowledge, the Bible knowledge, being filled with all of this knowledge. That is not a guarantee of spiritual maturity or even spiritual growth. The end goal is that the principles must be practically obeyed and mastered at each level or stage. Kristen? Thank you very much, Shepard Anita. Yes, I can agree with that. I can attest to that as well in terms of, you know, you see people, you see individuals, you know, in assemblies and they would have been there for times. And I too can talk about an experience where, you know, speaking with individuals and when it comes, they could tell you different scriptures, they could quote the scriptures, but then when the test comes, is almost as if they cannot stand up to the test that would come. Yeah, so it's one thing to know the Word of God. It's one thing to read the Word of God, but it is a totally different thing to master it and live it, basically. So knowing or reading your Bible does not necessarily mean that you're a spiritually mature believer. You could be at that baby stage. You could be at the childhood stage still, even though you will be reading your Bible every day because, again, we talk about teaching and how teaching is so important You know, to get people to obey the Word of God and do what it says, rather than just to know it, to have that head knowledge, you know. And what teaching would do is bring people to action then, rather than to just have it in their head. Thank you, Kristen. You mentioned when the test comes. What do you mean by when the test comes? What test is that? So with Jehovah God, in order for us to know that we would have mastered something, he's going to test us on it. So it could be, Okay, the Bible talks about, you know, lust. Something simpler, you know, mm-hmm. something like lust. And we must be able to say, okay, I've mastered this. I no longer fall prey to the desire of lust. I no longer fall prey to this temptation, that okay. temptation. And God himself is not the devil. God himself will test us according to the word. It makes no sense for us to read his word, read the Bible, but yet we can't live what it says. Okay. We can't function. We can't operate. We can't, you know, overcome. Mm-hmm. 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 You must be able to master those things. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. The spiritually mature fivefold teacher helps in accurately discerning the spiritual age in order to know what to teach. The teacher is able to rightly divide the word for the believer, feeding them according to their spiritual age and not their biological age. The teacher must know what to give them and what not to give them. They should not be getting meat when they're at the milk stage because this is damaging. Likewise, they should not be getting milk when they're at the meat stage, because this would be frustrating. So the teacher plays an important part in the life of a believer. Now, for example, imagine that you have a two-year-old daughter. Would you tell that two-year-old daughter what her private part is for? Specifically, that it is used to have babies? Would you tell that to your two-year-old? No! The two-year-old daughter does not need to have that information as much as it is the truth. She does not need that truth at that specific age. Likewise, not every scripture is applicable to every spiritual age and stage. Every believer is not at the same stage, so all of them should not be getting the same teaching or the same feeding. 1 John 2, 27 reads, But as for you, Christ has poured out his spirit on you. As long as his spirit remains in you, you do not need anyone to teach you. Now, honestly, can you tell a newborn spiritual babe, someone who just got saved, that he or she does not need a teacher? 
No, for that would be catastrophic and that would contradict Ephesians 4, 11 to 16, which tells us about the need and the purpose of the fivefold teacher. The fivefold teacher is needed in the life of the believer. That scripture is applicable to the spiritually mature. And there are many other scriptures, but we would not go into them at this moment. Adina, can you share, please? Thank you so much, Shepherd Anita. And a perfect example to what you're saying there here again in terms of teaching is that the spiritual babe right now at Kingdom Academy, we are looking at the flesh versus the spirit as in Galatians 5. And the spiritual babe, think about it, they're just coming in out of the world of sin. So they are still basically flesh. So we have been looking at the works of the flesh, you know, at the spiritual babe stage, because that is something that they need to be able to, as Christian would have said, being able to master. I mean, the Bible says that the flesh and the spirit would be constantly at war with each other. But at the end of the day, the spiritual babe needs to be taught how to maneuver how to deal with the flesh when the flesh is trying to put itself in the way as opposed to walking in the spirit and allowing the spirit to take control. So that is an example, you know, of rightly dividing the word of truth, knowing that at different levels you cannot be taught the same thing. And the same thing applies even to the spiritually mature. You would have that person sitting and you're giving them baby milk as opposed to the meat that they deserve. And so, you know, we really have to be able to discern the different levels and know what food each are to be given at the different stages. Thank you so very much, Adina. Kristen? Thank you very much. And I just want to bring even a scenario. We said that the fivefold ministers are there to bring the body of Christ to maturity, to bring them up, to raise them up to maturity now the amount of years that you will spend in any place does not necessarily mean that you've grown yeah it is how you've mastered the thing how well you can tell your flesh no yeah imagine you decide that you're gonna select a new minister Mm -hmm. to lead a congregation but yet they've not gone through these types of teachings and dealing with these things they will not be able to function effectively because they will still have to battle with these, what do you call, I would say, the baby issues of the flesh when, you know, and still wanting to be leading people. Mm -hmm. Now, until you go through these basic steps and master them, I would not think about pushing you up to the next level. So, again, as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual, Mm -hmm. we need to make sure that you master something. In your job, they're not going to promote you unless they see that you've come to a certain place of understanding the job that you're Mm -hmm. doing. So why do we believe, why do we think that as believers we should be doing the same? Putting people into positions, but yet they've not gone through the tests and the trials to show that they've mastered these things. If I'm at the baby stage, I need to be mastering baby stage stuff. If I'm not at the spiritual childhood stage, I need to make sure that I've mastered those before I think about going on. Mm -hmm. We cannot lump everybody together Mm -mm. and think that it's going to be effective it will not be effective and people it's an injustice that is happening to both the spiritually immature believer and the spiritually mature believer some one of them will be left lacking Mm -hmm. at Mm -hmm. the end of the day that's it at a disadvantage yes. yes thank you thank you very much Kristen so we're pointing out the need for the fivefold teacher who has the ability to discern the spiritual age of believers. The fivefold teacher is needed. We cannot continue to place people according to their biological age in an assembly. The length of time that a person is in an assembly, the fact that they've been doing service for so long, they've been doing this, they've been doing that, they've been doing all sorts of things, that is not a determining factor for your spiritual age. The fivefold teacher is needed. One of the ministers of the fivefold governmental leadership team, that teacher is really needed to be able to accurately discern the spiritual age. 
it is necessary that the spiritual age is discerned. And we're talking about in terms of the spiritual age, we are saying we have the spiritual baby, the spiritual child, the spiritual teenager, and the spiritual adult. The spiritually mature fivefold teacher is able to discern the age of the believer by their characteristics. That is what they use to determine their age. We see, once again, as it is in the natural, it is in the spiritual. We see a child, and we see a child behaving a particular... You know for a fact, oh my goodness, yeah, that's a child. You see a teenager behaving a sort of way, like a 10-year-old or whatever, you say, okay, childish. you know that teenager is still very much childish, right? And we say, you're still childish, eh? Mm -hmm. We would say that because of what? Their characteristic, their behavior. 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1 to 3 reads, Dear brothers and sisters, when I was with you, I couldn't talk to you as I would to spiritual people. I had to talk to you as though you belonged to this world or as though you were infants in Christ. I had to feed you with milk, not with solid food, because you weren't ready for anything stronger and you still aren't ready. For you are still controlled by your sinful nature. You are jealous of one another and quarrel with one another. Doesn't that prove you are controlled by your sinful nature? Aren't you living like people of the world? The Apostle Paul, a fivefold minister, was able to identify the spiritual age of these believers. He told them that they were still babies. They were still spiritual babies. He had to be feeding them with milk. He couldn't speak to them like the spiritually mature. He couldn't give them this solid food because they were not yet ready for it. He said, look at the characteristics that you're displaying. You're jealous of one another. You're quarreling. That is what the people in the world would do. Not those who are in Christ. So because you are your spiritual babies, these are the characteristics of a spiritual babe. The Apostle Paul was able to identify the behavior, the characteristics of of the believer. Adina? Yes, and you are so right. And it's really sad that the Apostle Paul had to speak to believers like that. And no doubt he was speaking to grown believers who he thought would have been at that place of maturity. So true. Who, who would have known the word and be able to apply the word. But let me just, you know, put a plug in here that, you know, it's not only about knowing the scriptures. It's not just about Bible knowledge. It's not about how much scriptures that you can quote and, mm. you know, sound so eloquent, you know, when you're speaking. Having Bible knowledge is not enough. The end goal is that you are able to apply the principles and can be practical about it. So it's about practically obeying the scriptures and number two, being able to master the scriptures. And so at the end of the day, what we are saying to you here is about practical living and understanding that you have to be taught at the different levels for where you're at. If you're at a spiritual baby stage, you have to be taught at that level, the given the milk of the word that is needed for that level. And so we want to thank you for really listening to us this week. And we trust that what we are imparting to you here that you can be able to examine yourself, look into yourself, and you may be asking yourself where you're at in terms of being in the spiritual level. And as Shepherd Anita would have said, it's about the characteristics, and hopefully next week we would be unfolding those for you so you can have a better idea of where you stand. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adina. Kristen? Yes, yeah, thank you very much. As Adina was speaking, and I was saying, you know, there would be many individuals who would probably consider themselves to be at the baby stage. But one thing that makes the difference, and we're talking about the fivefold teacher, is that when there's a fivefold teacher present, mm -hmm. people grow. People grow. So when there's a fivefold <laughs> teacher present, the people do not stay at the baby stage. They grow because that fivefold teacher would be teaching them at their level. There will be no one that will be getting food that is not for them. I just want to encourage you guys to examine yourself, be truthful with yourself, and as we continue, you will know exactly where you are. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kristen. Thank you very much for sharing with us. You are listening to us, and we thank you very much for tuning in. If you are a believer, 
it is important that you connect with spiritually mature fivefold ministers who can help you to accurately discern your spiritual age. There are too many believers who are deceived into thinking that they are at a spiritual age when they are not, and this hinders true spiritual growth. We want to encourage you, if you wish to speak with any one of us, if you wish to contact us, you are free to do so. We have no problems. We'll be glad to answer your questions and to direct you according. So we are just encouraging you to continue to listen, reach out, examine yourself, honest with yourself concerning your spiritual age, not because you've been in an assembly for 10 years, you're a Sunday school teacher. That does not necessarily mean that you are a teacher of the word. That does not mean that you are a fivefold teacher. If you have been doing so many things in an assembly for so long, that does not help you to determine that you are spiritually mature or that you're a spiritual teenager. You want to know for sure where you're at so that you can be taught according to your spiritual age. We thank you very much for listening to this week's program on the fivefold governmental leadership team as we continue to speak about the fivefold teacher. This week's topic was the fivefold teacher in office having the ability to accurately discern the spiritual ages of believers. Thank you for tuning in on another Teach Me to Obey radio broadcast. As usual, I had with me Adina Lee and Kristen Amer, two level three students who has been with me for the past weeks as we continue to share and educate you on the fivefold governmental leadership team. Do enjoy the rest of your Sunday evening.